Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemini TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. What a lovely day everyone and here is Ozean News. Antony Blinken makes a strong commitment to a strengthened partnership with Indonesia. A senior official says United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken made a strong commitment to Indonesia as he kicked off a Southeast Asia trip aimed at strengthening ties with the region that has become a strategic arena for Washington and Beijing. In his first trip to the region since United States President Joe Biden took office in January, Blinken met with Indonesian President Joko Widodo, the first of several top officials he will see on a four-day tour that includes Malaysia and Thailand. Summarizing the meeting, Indonesian Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi says Blinken showed a noticeable strong interest in partnering with their country, especially in infrastructure. The discussion was very warm and open, and the United States' commitment to a strengthened partnership with Indonesia was not simply strong, including in economy. Blinken will deliver a speech on the United States Indo Pacific strategy in the capital Jakarta, among other events, before meetings in Malaysia and Thailand. Southeast Asia is a key stage for a rivalry between the United States and China, with a heated struggle for influence as the Biden administration seeks to reconnect with a region to which United States commitment was questioned under President Donald Trump. Australia signed a $717 billion defense deal with South Korea. <sighs> Australia signs a $1 billion Australian dollar defense deal with South Korea, boosting Seoul's efforts to grow its military exports. Under the terms of the deal, South Korean defense company Hanwha Corp will build 30 self-propelled howitzers and 15 armored ammunition resupply vehicles for Australia, positioning Hanwha as a front-runner for Australia's planned $30 billion Australian dollar contract to build infantry fighting vehicles for its army. While the defense deal is the headline of South Korean President Moon Jae-in's four-day trip to Australia, both countries said they have also agreed to work closely to help ensure supplies of Australian critical minerals exports for South Korea's tech sector. South Korea needs critical mineral supplies have been pledged to become a global battery manufacturing powerhouse by 2030 as part of its plan to be carbon neutral by 2050. Australia supplies around 40% of South Korea's critical mineral imports, which are crucial for many of the components needed to drive the world's economy to net zero emissions by 2050. Indonesian Muslims in an evacuation center attends their first Friday prayer following the deadly eruption of Mount Semeru. <laughs> At least 45 people are killed and hundreds injured in Saturday's eruption. More than 6,500 people are evacuated, many of them uncertain whether they will ever be able to live in that area again. Evacuee Abdul Ghaffar joined several hundred others displaced by the disaster for Friday prayers in a makeshift mosque at the Penangal Evacuation Center. He also hopes to be evacuated to a better place soon. I usually pray at my village, but now I pray here in a tent. I can't believe this has happened to me. I hope that I will be evacuated to a better place soon. The 3,676-meter volcano erupted spectacularly on Saturday, sending a towering cloud of ash into the sky and dangerous pyroclastic flows into villages below. Australian Prime Minister meets the President of South Korea in Canberra. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison welcomes his South Korean counterpart, President Moon Jae-in, to Australia's Parliament House in Canberra. Moon joined by his wife Kim jong sok greeted by Morrison and his wife Jenny outside Parliament House before the South Korean President signed the visitors' books. Moon and Morrison are later joined by their ministers and staff for official discussions where they address matters including defense, critical minerals and low emissions technology.
China approves new monoclonal COVID drug valuable to whole world. The country's leading epidemiologist Zhong Nangshan says China newly approved monoclonal antibody drugs for COVID-19 treatment could be valuable for the whole world. Tsinghua University, the Third People's Hospital of Shenzhen, and Pre Bioscience have jointly developed a cocktail therapy of monoclonal antibodies BRII-196 and BRII-198, which are derived from antibodies isolated from people who have recovered from COVID-19. Overseas, the cocktail therapy is undergoing phase three clinical trials in seven countries, including the United States, Brazil, and the Philippines. Zong, who led the drug's phase two clinical trial, says the antibody drugs are by far for the most effective for patients with high viral loads. The two antibodies, BRII-196 and BRII-198, are effective in treating patients with high viral loads. It is safe to say that the two medicines are by far the most effective. It's of great value for China to develop and produce its own antibody medicines. The two medicines are derived from carefully selected antibodies, so I think it's very valuable to promote the drugs across the world. At present, Zong's laboratory team in South China's Guangzhou city is presiding over the research of the new drugs used for epidemic prevention, especially their use on people with a poor vaccine response. According to Zong, the drugs have shown no obvious side effects, while their efficacy is trial in the United States are even more promising. According to the statement published by the Brie Biosciences that the research data has demonstrated that the approved drug have maintained their effectiveness against Omicron and other widely circulating variants including Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, and Delta Plus. Zhang Xi, an assistant research fellow at Tsinghua University School of Medicine, who is a member of the drugs development team, said researchers have made discovered clues on how to deal with future variants of the novel coronavirus. Environment a Japanese government official says Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi and United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken agree on the need to fortify their country's alliance amid a tougher regional security environment. Hayashi and Blinken hold talks on the sidelines of a meeting of a group of seven foreign ministers in the English city of Liverpool. Faced with China's military build-up and North Korea's nuclear and missile programs, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida says he plans to fundamentally strengthen Japan's defense posture by looking into options including acquiring the capability to strike enemy bases. The official says Hayashi and Blinken did not discuss the diplomatic boycott of the Beijing Winter Olympics. This week, Canada joined Australia, Britain and the United States in saying they will not send top officials to the Games citing long-standing concerns over China's human rights records, while Japan has yet to make its stance clear. Japan's Yomiuri Shimbun Daily reported, citing multiple sources with knowledge of the matter, that senior Japanese government officials will likely skip the games, joining the United States and others in a diplomatic boycott. Chinese president urges artists writers to enhance cultural. President Xi urges Chinese literary and art workers to bolster their cultural awareness and cultural confidence to better serve the people and socialism and strive to build China into a country with a strong socialist culture. This year marks the sentimental of the founding of the CPC. Xi says that the CPC has taken the construction of a new culture of the Chinese nation that is national, scientific and popular as its mission and has actively advanced the development of culture and the prosperity and development of literature and art. She urged the Chinese artists and writers to bear the national rejuvenation and people in mind, stick to innovation on the basis of what has worked in the past, to create great artistic works, catering to the times, tell the Chinese stories to the rest of the world. The head of state inspires them to work hard and contribute more to realizing the Chinese dream of national rejuvenation. Li Keqiang, Lin Zhanzu, Wang Yang, Wang Huning, Zhao Lezi and Hang Zheng Members of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee attended the ceremony along with about 3,000 other people at the Great Hall of the People. Kite enthusiasts visit Angkor Wat after Cambodia relaxes coronavirus restrictions.
The Angkor International Festival of the Arts 2021 is taking place in various forums and venues across the country, and the traditional Cambodian kites are flying high in the famed Angkor Wat temple sites. Students and tourists are still learning how to make their own kites in the traditional way, while Big Clang Egg, the Cambodian kites with a bamboo resonator attached to the top, were demonstrated by the experienced kite enthusiast. Kites have traditionally been flown after the rice harvest season in December, when the skies are clear and farmers have finished their work in the fields and rice paddies. Locals are happy to see activities and people streaming back into the tourist spot. The series of events are to celebrate the designation of Siem Rap as ASEAN City of Culture 2021-2022. And that's the whole news for today's episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice, lovely weekend, everyone.